Enugu Rangers held a 1 0 slender lead against Sagrada of Angola at the Godswill Akpabio Stadium. While for Ilimba, it was a goalless draw away at a 12 Filante of Burkina Faso. Both teams have it all to do as uh, they look forward to progress into the group stage of CAF competitions. With that, I welcome you to another exciting edition of Sports Pizza. My name is Edwin Onye Police. It promises to be another exciting time on a set today. We have a lot to unpack, a lot to analyze, to dissect. And I'm not doing this alone. I have David in the studio with me. On the rundown today, we'll take a look at the NPFL games. we we'll put a Yimba Rangers under the spotlight. Of course, we we'll tell you um, the Nigerian players uh, who did great stuff uh, over the weekend. In European football, the North London Derby, Liverpool losing at home, and Barcelona keep on firing on all cylinders. And as always, We'll give you the best, the best on the show. It is Sports Pizza. Let's catch your breath. Go on a break. When we come back, the show gets started. Welcome back. This is Sports Pizza. Edwin and David on set. David, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Edwin, pleasure to be here as always. I had a very exciting weekend. Sports yeah. in action. The Formula 1 drama, then the football. Arsenal are a good team. <laughs> are way. Arsenal are a good team. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, before we get to all of that, let's start from the home front. Um, it was Pinidi Jord versus Emmanuel Amunike. Rivers United versus Heartland. It ended 3-1 in favour of Rivers United. And you fear for Heartland. Um, last season, they got relegated. Yeah. They are only in the Premier League this season because beyond limits um gave up their slots. gave up their slot and not just giving up their slot they had to go through um the due process yeah. the owner of remo stars yeah. um honorable, honorable Kule Shoname yeah. also owns beyond mm -hmm. limits and uh, the rules in the mpfl uh, stipulates that one man an individual Come. cannot Come. own two, two clubs. clubs now they are back in the premier league yeah. same result back to back losses yeah i mean for Hartland, I was not expecting much you know, miracles because the, the manager might have to you know, bring in Emmanuel Amenik with all the experience he has. But the board and all the whole drama that resulted in their relegation last season still remains. I mean, when government influence in a club is as strong as it is in Hartland, the club becomes a political tool. The football really suffers. And I think Amenik will try the very best he can, but back to back losses now. Hopefully, they don't go back, they don't go back to uh, relegation again and look for another slot to, to come back. Let's project hypothetically. Heartland gets relegated at the end of the season, or perhaps the results, positive result not forthcoming, yeah. there's a managerial change. Is that an asterisk on Amrike's career with regards to the future possibility of managing the Super Eagles? Um, I think for the Super Eagles, you know, and considering how we look at the 94 say, which is fortunate to be a part of, I think we hold them in high regard. And we've seen the Guavon multiple times, you know, get a shot at the nationality. The fact that Siasi, after a year out suspended, is still being linked to the Super Eagles job tells you that most times these things don't really, you know, count, you know. The MPFL is a, is a different beast on its own. But if it was a regular, you know, MPFL coach, you see, with chances of getting the national team job are difficult. But for an ex international, I think their chances are not much affected. Okay, uh, all that results shooting stars were held at home by Play 2 United, Biosa United, and Kano Pillars played out a 1 1 draw. Niger Tornadoes and Nasara United played out a goalless draw. Castina United defeated Bendel Insurance by two goals to one. Aqua United were held at home by Abia Warriors. I thought um, this was a game where Aqua United uh, would get all three points, but hey, um, it wasn't to be. Remo Stars, it was hard fought yeah. 1 0 win against Sunshine Stars. A quick look at the standing, still early days after two games. Remo Stars have uh, six points, that's um, two wins from two. Kano Pillars are second, Rivers United are third, and Niger Tornadoes are fourth. The same points uh, with uh, Play 2 United, who also have uh, four points. Um, all right, away from the NPFL, David. Enugu Rangers won Sagrada of Angola 0. Once again, the question is, is that one goal lead enough to see them progress to the next round? I mean, before we go here, I predicted that they'll be knocked out in this round. Sagrada will knock them out. And a 1-0 um, first leg victory at home, going away to Angola. 
makes it more difficult. I mean, it's not just, you know, the, the score line. It's just the, the manner in which they struggle, you know. When you're at home, you expect to. I can't remember last time in a Nigerian club, you know, home game in a qualifier like this. Blew away with the opponent. Yeah, opponents. and made the second leg a World Cup. They always make it difficult. And when you put yourself in this situation, it makes it more challenging to qualify. Hopefully, they will do all it takes. But I, for me personally, I think they will not be able to make it. And for Inyimba, different scenario. They are playing at home this yeah. time against Etoe Filante. Uh, you would think that the experience yeah. in this Enyimba squad should be enough to see them progress to the group stage. Yeah, for Enyimba, I think in their own situation, a 1-0 home victory will now be a good result for them. So I think they put themselves in a good situation. I think they'll do enough to get to, to the group stages. Okay, we'll be giving you all the latest updates as with regards to the CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederations Cup. Before we leave the home scene, David, um, who are the Nigerian players? And uh, that shone like a million stars over the weekend. I mean, this season has started quite well for a few of our Nigerian players. Over the course of the weekend, we saw two of our you know, front runners for the CAF Awards. We saw Victor Boniface and Ademola Lukman have fantastic performances for their club. Yeah. And Boniface had two goals and an assist for Bayer Leverkusen in their victory, their 4 1 victory. Ademola Lukman, the goal and an assist. So he puts himself firmly as I think those two are one and two for the CAF Awards. And then for a player that I, you know, I talked about a few weeks ago during the transfer window that I think Oyeka needs to move. He actually finally made that low move from Brentford to Augsburg in the German Women's League and he got his assist. First 19 minutes in a long time, I'm happy for him. And for Josh Maja in the Championship, also Shemi Ajayi for West Bromwich and beyond, their second on the table in the Championship. Maja was nominated for, you know, September Player of the Month in the Championship. I think it's a good one for him. You know, he has only one cap for Nigeria, but the fact that we have an option like that is good for them. Online, no special shout out to him. He had a fantastic performance against Liverpool. A clean sheet, you know, the most dribbles, the most tackles completed, the most passes in that game. I think it was solid for them. And he's an option. He playing at the, as a right back. So I think um, that option will be, will be good for the Super Eagles. And those players, you know, give, give themselves a good shout this weekend. But you forgot about the man of the moment. Victor Osimhen made his long awaited debut for Galatasaray. No goal, but an assist. And I'm sure you've seen the videos where um, he was chanting. Uh, with the fans yeah. um, at the terrace. In fact, um, he had to be um, um, lifted up yeah, to yeah, the stands, yeah. um, singing with them, taking pictures, and waving the flag. Yeah, absolutely. But, I mean, most of our Nigerian fans who don't understand how big Galatasaray is, they are one of the biggest clubs in Turkey, one of the biggest clubs in Europe. Their fan base is one of the most, you know, the most charged in all of Europe. So I think um, in Istanbul Stadium, very strong. I think Osime and the Balatasha I find is a marriage made in heaven. Yeah. I do why I didn't talk about things because there's still more to come. So yeah. I'm, I'm cooking something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, David, away from football, let's go to Formula One, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. We'll talk about Max Verstappen later, yeah. but seriously, what is McLaren cooking? If it's not Lando Norris, it's Oscar, it's Oscar Piastri, the Australian. That was how it finished uh, over the weekend. Oscar Piastri uh, finished um, ahead of the chasing pack. And in second position was Charles Leclerc. Third position, George Russell. And from ninth position, Lando Norris uh, finished fourth ahead of Max Verstappen. And right now, the point has cut down from 61 to 59. Yeah, absolutely. On the driver standing... Point has been called, but on the constructor, McLaren have taken over on the constructor's championship. Considering the fact that they were about 50 points ahead a few weeks ago, and now they've completely so it tells you that Red Bull are no longer the strongest uh, team on the, uh, the grid. And I think um, McLaren are doing something spectacular. The fact that they have two solid drivers and then they now have a good car, they are the team of the second half. You know, the first half was all about Red Bull and Max Verstappen, but second half is now McLaren's show, and I think. Um, Verstappen is quaking in his boot at this point in time because the performances don't keep to be coming. And I think the team needs to do something drastic to change fortune. With seven races left, David, uh, 206 points uh, to fight for. Like you said, with the Constructors uh, title, McLaren uh, 20 points um, ahead okay. of the Red Bull. The last time McLaren won the Constructors uh, title was in 1998. But hey, in 2007, they could have won um, the Constructors titles, but uh, they were involved um, in some... Um, 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 not so good issues that saw points deducted uh, from their overall tally. But hey, they're looking good to reclaim that title in 2024. The next race is the Singapore Grand Prix. But while we know Max Verstappen will represent Red Bull in Singapore, it looks like he might not be with Red Bull next season if things don't change. Mercedes are sniffing yeah. in the corner and for Red Bull, they cannot afford to lose Max Verstappen. 
I mean, they cannot afford to because the the other drivers, Caperes, is not is not the 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 name to reckon with. So I think they need to do everything to hold on to him. But I think you know, with the whole drama of the issue with his father and the team principal, and then himself with also the team, and he's not happy with how the the the, the car is, uh, the yeah. performances the car is giving. So I think they need to a lot of drastic overhaul if they want to keep on to their favorite driver. Okay, we've come to the end of the first half of the show. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we're going to turn our attention back to football. But this time, it is European football. We're starting with the North London Derby. A quick start before we do that break. Arsenal have been behind in just nine minutes in 2024 in the Premier League. Absolutely outstanding. Welcome back from that short break. It is the second half of Sports Pizza. In case you don't know, we're on social media. Please give us a follow. The handles are showing on your screen. David, quick one. North London Derby, Tottenham 0, Arsenal 1. It is the first time since 1978, 1979, where they went on to win three consecutive away games in the North London Derby. Ateta is cooking. Um, Gabriel once again yeah. um, providing the goal for Arsenal um, via a corner kick. Uh, you get a feeling that this Arsenal side have a lot of things going for them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the testament to this team is the fact that you, a good team is a team that even when they are not playing well, even on your best, you are still able to grind their results. You know, the goal from the set pieces has now become trademark. Go back to the days under Wenger where considering from set pieces was Arsenal's trade, but now actually scoring, you know, since the beginning of last season, Arsenal has scored 24 goals from set pieces in the Premier League, the most in the Premier League. It tells you that they are a team that they can hurt you from every angle. So, they have a foundation, a solid defence, and with that foundation, you can build from it. They don't give their opponents much options, you know. They concede less short on attack, they concede less opportunities, and then, when the opportunity comes, you know, you set a platform first and you get results. In this moment, David, I'm tempted to say the difference between Manchester City and Arsenal is Erling Brothaland. Yeah, I think so. When you look at the, the defensive record and you look at the attacking numbers, last season we saw the difference between Arsenal and Man City. It was two points actually. And then in the goal scoring, Man City scored more goals, five more goals than Arsenal. But even though Arsenal had the best defence in the league, so they have the foundation of a defence, but I think the scoring goals... Fine, you say 91 goals is not a bad number, but there were games where those goals were actually needed. The Fulham game, they needed to win. The game against West Ham, they needed to win. They couldn't get the goals. So Aston I think, Villa. Yeah, Aston Villa, they couldn't get it. So I think that's the difference. They need just goals when it's needed. Fine, you can score multiple goals in matches where you're playing. When you're not playing well and you need a goal, that can clinch a result for you. I think that's what Arsenal is lacking at this moment. All right, um, more questions for Andrzej Postecoglou. Yeah, many more questions. <laughs> I think... The honeymoon is officially over. Yeah, it is over. He started over. last season 26 points from the first 30 games. But one thing about him is, you know, we talk about managers not having a clearly defined style like uh, in Eric Tenag. But Postecoglou is the op opposite Come of on, man. He Come a, on. He has a Come defined on. style. Why is Manchester United catchy streets? No, I was just trying to, <laughs> I was trying to just make a comparison. Yeah. Look at Postecoglou. He has a clearly defined style, but he's dogmatic. He sticks to it, even when he's going against him. The fact yeah. that sports, you know, I mentioned Arsenal scoring 24 goals from six pieces. In that time period, sports have consisted 16 from set pieces and they asked Postecoglou and he said until the day I see considering from set pieces as a problem that's when I will address it I don't think considering from set pieces will stop us from getting to work I think those kind of statements to tell you a manager who has refused to adapt and I think for that reason he will struggle in the Premier League Alright so for Liverpool it wasn't the result many expected yeah. a brilliant goal from Hudson or Doyle um, now Liverpool fans might come for me but I look at this team and I think there is an over-reliance on Mohamed Salah. Now, it's not a bad thing to rely on your most potent attacker. Yeah. But when the support cast are not pulling their weight, yeah. then you are putting extra burden on players like Salah. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that creatively and even goal scoring is the major hub, everything seems to go through him. I yeah. think if you're able to marshal out Salah out, it makes it difficult. The only player in the attack who has also lived up to the this season is Darwin, I'm sorry, Luis Diaz. And I think for that reason, you know, the likes of Kodigaku, Diego Jota, they've not turned up really. This is Darwin Nunez as well. So I think that over reliance might come back to hurt them this season. Uh, before we leave Liverpool, once again, they were exposed. Um, there's a lack of quality from the guys coming in. 
um, from the bench. Uh, you look at City, they have quality to call upon. You look at Arsenal, they, they're missing Martin Odegaard. Um, Declan Rice didn't start. Yeah. Calafiore is out. Yeah. Mikel Merino also um, hasn't played uh, a minute for Arsenal. But when you look at Liverpool, the guys coming from the bench, hey, no disrespect to them. Curtis yeah. Jones is it's not, not the guy to scare you. Elliot is not the guy to scare you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's for this reason, I think Klopp did a good job, you know, trying to balance the starting level, get them a good foundation. But I think there's still a lot of building that needs to be done in the, you know, the, the base of the squad. You know, the ceiling is quite high, but the basement of the squad still needs some building. All right, there are also good results for Chelsea. It was a slow first um, at the Vitality Stadium, yeah. Bournemouth 0, uh, Chelsea 1. We saw a record number of yellow cards uh, dished out, uh, 14, 14 in total. In fact, we saw um, a record number of yellow cards in, in the, the first, first half, half in the North the, London Derby. Yeah. Seven yellow cards um, in that first half. It was a crazy, crazy weekend in the Premier League. For Manchester United, they returned to winning ways, uh, defeating Southampton 3-0 from home. Um, Andre Onana um, was the hero of the day, saving the penalty. In that moment... Uh, United were on the cosh. Away from the Premier League, quickly in the Spanish La Liga, Barcelona seemed to be on a ride. It's a juggernaut, a team um, that um, seems to have momentum that is difficult to stop. Yeah. They easily dispatched Girona. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, April this year, they faced the same Girona and they, they were totally out. Yeah. So you say this Girona is not the same Girona. They've lost a few key players. But I think for the manager of Girona, Michel, to come out and say, we didn't lose because, you know, a lot of refusal. we lost because Barcelona showed that they are aware. I think as a flick, you know, it needs to be studied. I think he went and did his homework about this Barcelona team. The fact that they've not had too many new signings come in, but he's managed the squad well. And then... La Masia is doing some wonders for him. Some of the guys coming in from the La Masia, likes of Mark Bernard, likes of Victor, Victor Fort, you know, the likes of um, you know Paul Kubasi. Yeah. That's, so he has blended everything together. Lamin Yama, the best 17 year old that football has ever seen, to be very honest. Oh, really? Yeah. There's, no, <laughs> there's a certain Pele of blessed memory. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch Pelé's. <laughs> yeah. All right, still the Spanish La Liga, David. Uh, from Barcelona, uh, Real Madrid, 2-0 at the Anueta against Sociedad. Um, a difficult game, but there are still questions. Questions, questions about um, the um, cohesion in attack. Yeah. And of course, Kylian Mbappe, um, you listen to Real Madrid fans uh, after that game, there's a feeling that he seems to be doing a lot at the detriment of playing together with um, the team. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it was very um, pointing that, you know, Neymar actually sent, sent a statement to, you know, um, to Rodrigo and Vinicius that it's not as easy to play with Mbappe as you might think. Though it was tongue-in-cheek, but I oh, think wow. there's a lot of... Yeah. There to unpack there. It means Mbappe, the, playing with Mbappe demands... Yeah, you know, individualistic. Yeah, so I think there's a lot of work and a lot of things to do to get them playing together. But also the midfield, I think there's still a lot of issues with creativity because... They've scored only one goal from open play this season. Most of their goals have been from penalties, so I think they have a lot of work to do. All right, um, Atletico Madrid it was a 3-0 win against Valencia. A new boy, Conor Gallagher, yeah. uh, was on the sheet and um, he's quite becoming popular within the Atletico Madrid fan base. In the Italian Serie A, there's a reality check uh, for Thiago Mota. Back-to-back yeah. -back draws for Juventus. Yeah, back-to-back -back draws, but they are still here to concede a goal. I think it's going to... When I looked at the score, you know, a lot of new players. The starting level is completely almost different from what was on show last season. So I think it's usual team problems, new manager and new players. But I think the style of football is gradually getting, getting to... We're going to see a, a more tougher title chart between themselves and Inter Milan this season. And Milan got their first win of the season. It was a good win, but hey... Will you put it down to the quality of the opponent, Venezia? Yeah, I think so. The first 25 minutes, they were already out of the, blown their opponents out of the water. I think Fonseca still has a lot of work to do. There are a lot of issues. You know, he started the season trying to bench the likes of Tio Hernandez and yeah. Andy Bafa. And he felt <laughs> you are not going to go anywhere without your best players. And I think the more those players get into the team and play well, I think Milan will eventually click into gear. And uh, let's uh, give a shout out to Bayern Munich, 6 1 yeah. um, away from home against New Boys uh, hosting uh, Kel. Yeah. Harry Kane uh, with a hat trick. Yeah. I've lost count of um, number no, of hat tricks um, he scored in, in a short while in the German Bulldogs Liga. This is where we we'll draw our curtains on today's show. I'm sure you had so much fun with us. We'll leave you with our video for the week. Remember to give us a follow on our social media platforms. We'll be back on your screen same time next week. Keep it a date 
with Sports Pizza. My name is Edwin Onyebole. Said do have a fantastic week and of course a great weekend. And of course, David, once again, thank you for being around. Always a pleasure, fun as always. And from David, it's goodbye. <laughs>